In the headlines, Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed vows Ethiopia's commitment to Africa's independence never diminishes. The Western media made a big fuss over how the TPL were supposedly a couple of hours away from Ethiopia's capital, says Canadian journalist. And China says true friends of Africa should work in partnership for mutual benefits. Hello and welcome to our this news hour. I'm Daniel Kasahun with the news. Prime Minister Rabi Hamel reiterates Ethiopia's commitment to Africa's independence never diminishes. The Premier comes first to express his message to felicitation of Africans on the decision to hold the 35th African Union Heads of State and Government Summit in Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa. There have been pressures from non African government to host the African Union sessions out of Ethiopia. Let's take a look. In each and every moment, the African Union Summit of Fair State and Government happens on the continental capital Addis Ababa, where the organization is founded in the 1960s. Year after year, Addis Ababa has been instrumental in hosting the leaders' summit. This year is also dedicated to Ethiopia to hold the high-level summit of the continent's leaders to deliberate on pressing issues of the continent's nations. Expressing his message of felicitation, Prime Minister Rabi Yamad indicated the the upcoming session would be instrumental to expect Ethiopia's unique and real image to the whole world. Ethiopia, which is a cradle of mankind and a front runner to the civilization of the whole world, never been colonized, presents a lot to Africans and the rest of the whole world to be proud of. The Premier expressed gracefulness to the whole leaders of the nations of the continent in expressing their confidence to hold the leaders' summit in Addis Ababa, where they their umbilical cord of liberty is buried. The Premier indicated Ethiopia appreciates the decision of the African Union member states to convene the 35th African Union summit in person in Addis Ababa. Ethiopia is placed with the current leaders of Africa for acknowledging Ethiopia's historic and unwavering stance to advance Africa and Pan African agendas. Abi further indicated it is high time for Africans to strengthen their unity at a time when there was a push to change the location of the African Union semi from Addis Ababa, he observed. The time seeks fraternal partnership, the action of those who have been pushing for African Union semi to be held out of Addis Ababa, citing COVID 19's pride and security situation as British had a sad in Ethiopia, read the statement of the Premier. Abi has recalled Ethiopia's contribution to African issues and reassured continued commitment to the African affairs and Pan-Africanism. Ethiopia has never taken the issue of Africanism as secondary, but as priority. Its commitment to Africa's independence has never diminished. The place it gives to Pan-Africanism is always significant. Ethiopia is the same in the past and present, he said. Recognizing Ethiopia's strong position on African issues, its contributions to the African Union, commitment to African affairs and the significance of the African Union summit, the Prime Minister stated that the African leaders have chosen at Sabawa to host the summit. He has also called on Ethiopians and residents of the city to cordially welcome their African comrades. The government has been undertaking diplomatic efforts with African countries and the African Union Commission to hold the summit in the capital city, he added. The session of the Executive Council and the 35th Organization of the Assembly of the AU, scheduled to take place from the first week of February 2022, has been launched on the AU website. A scholar says AU leaders' decision to hold the African Union summit in Addis Ababa suggests Africa's triumph over neo-colonialism. African leaders' decision to hold the AU summit in the headquarters of Addis Ababa shows they have a strong trust in 
Ethiopia's spread for African unity and their popular tradition of hospitality, the scholar noted. Goshimal Sazmor. Due to the year-long conflict in its north part, Ethiopia has been grappling with hybrid warfare from parts of the Western Bloc. This warfare, which Ethiopia has been fighting along with its global and continental allies, began with a well-organized global media campaign against Ethiopia's security status and beyond. A number of Western countries, for example, repeatedly announced the withdrawal of their citizens from Ethiopia, portraying the entire country as unsafe. Their ungrounded reports have also been backed up by fake news narrators like Addis Ababa was under siege. This was a deliberate attempt of the West with colonial mentality towards Africa targeting to weaken Addis Ababa, the world's third largest diplomatic city and center of conference. There was also a push to relocate the AU summit out of Addis Ababa. Given all the aforementioned warfare with new colonial goals, the decision of AU leaders to hold the current AU summit in Addis Ababa signifies the defeat of neocolonialism. Addis Ababa University's Kerid in Tazara told ETV. Since last year, various pressures have been exerted on Ethiopia to force the African Union not to hold its sessions in Addis Ababa. This move was willfully done by anti-Ethiopian nationalists with an attempt to dismantle and exclude Ethiopia from other world. Ethiopia is one of the founders of the African Union and played a significant role in United Nations peacekeeping and security. While all the warfare to relocate the African Union conference out of Addis has failed, the decision of African leaders to hold it in Addis sends special meaning to anti-Ethiopia and anti-African colonial powers. Africa leaders' decision to hold the AU summit in the headquarters shows they have a strong trust in Ethiopians' spirit for African unity and popular tradition of hospitality, apart from understanding the disinformation and misinformation of the global campaign against the country, the scholar disclosed. Offering a warm welcome to guests is the long-standing cultural asset of Ethiopians. One of the good things we need to strengthen at this challenging time is our invaluable hospitalization. First and most, when African leaders decided to the African Union Summit, they have a strong belief in Ethiopians' togetherness and hospitalization. We have to further nurture our good cultural value and welcome our guests. The African Union Summit will be held in Addis Ababa after two weeks. The Western media made a big fuss over how the TPLF were supposedly a couple of hours away from Ethiopia's capital. But the horrific destruction of major sites in Dese and Kombolcha show how Western news and many analysts completely missed the point. Tegasarnesa presents J. Pierce's file. Take a look. When Western powers have a vested geopolitical interest, they will start to dismantle any nation. They will use their many more media houses to cut where the nation's hurt lies. TPLF has been playing the role of the mannequin for these Western powers during TPLF's regime in Ethiopia. And currently, after being overthrown from power by Ethiopians' struggle, TPLF managed to destroy the country's historical vestiges. Before TPLF took over Desi a couple of months ago, this hospital has been equipped in an advanced manner which can be mistaken for places from developed country cities, noted Mr. Pierce. This hospital has been trying to rebuild the destructed property which will indeed need more time to finish. In addition, the main campus of Wollo University bears again damage worth millions of dollars. The president of Wollo University, Mangesha Ayana, shows what's left of the impairment TPLF caused. The president believes there were no accidents, but the most important equipment were either stolen or destroyed. I think the veterinarian came here. Even experts came here. That's what the hospital said. To the destroy? Said they no. Our experts, mm -hmm. we were looking for the differences, how they identified it. Mm -hmm. So according to the experts, mm -hmm. they supposed that experts should visit it. Experts from the group mm -hmm. visited this lab. 
Ti pjellef not only tarnish di tjopjes name among the international community's perception, but also the group looted and distracted hospitals, museums, and committed mass killings, which left the country with worth billions of dollars payment to make in order to go back to normalcy for these institutions on top of thousands of lives claimed by the terrorist group's heinous attacks on civilians. <laughs> ጎበኙ የሚያጓጓ በርካታ ነገር ይኖርናል አሁን ቀጣይ ጉዟቹ ወደዛ ይሆናል አልከን ቆይታ አብራችሁን ነው እንኳን yes sir ኦሮሚያ ዳወና ወልረት ያስቆራ They know acidic bulls and salt lakes. You're watching a Disney Hour. The current diaspora influx has not been seen in Ethiopia's history, says Pan-Africanists. African countries should learn from the Ethiopia's current trend of engaging its diaspora, they suggested. Ethiopia has been welcoming its diasporas arranging various events of reunion. And these diasporas have been making donations of various kinds to their homeland. Appearing on a TV roundtable, Pan Africanist said the carbon great diaspora homecoming challenge has never been seen in a country's history. With banks and then to, to invest here in Ethiopia, they are buying axioms and they are investing many things in here. This is this is amazing. Never been. Never been before sure so sure. Uh, the call was the call has got a greater contribution mm -hmm. the, from the prime minister ethiopia's carbon trend of engaging air sudas power shall be emulated by other african countries they're having that uh, initiative as well but it's not that uh, big mm -hmm. like here in ethiopia mm -hmm. so we should also learn from uh, ethiopia so in africa not move forward like this we should uh, encourage uh, uh, more diasporas uh, mm -hmm. to send more money eh, into our countries so that uh, we can develop our economies in different sectors and different areas the role of the diaspora in recovering Ethiopia's economy as well as building the infrastructure destroyed during a spell of invasion is immense they say i don't know when are we going to rebuild those old things so they are taking a great assignment mm -hmm. going back home i mean going back to their country mm -hmm. for that you know we have a problem just we saw the problem of water shortage of water education imagine education schools universities and colleges we don't have at all just it's all destroyed go to the health facilities it's gone and then uh, if you take you know roads and bridges you can take you know many of it we saw that so that is very painful. So they are taking their share to contribute in every of okay. it. Okay. At the same time, we have a problem on the other side of Ethiopia. I mean, like uh, the general problem. But main, the main problem right now we are facing is in the northern part of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They are far in Amhara region. And sure. then, yeah, so we are already, uh, I think they are working on that. And then I'm, I'm suggesting they have to take their share from each of it. Okay. Their calling is there. Professionally, they do have their own calling, right? Someone has got a calling on health area. Someone has got a calling on, you know, technology and mm. blah, blah. So okay. uh, I think they have to support with that. Talking on the normal movement, it will be institutionalized and sustained, they said. It should be supported hmm, by all Africans. Okay. It's not for one person. Eh? It's for everybody. Eh? These things concern everybody. Eh? We should come together. Also, we should support the founders of normal movement 
who's in a beauty spa, hmm? Dr. Simone, that's Fa Mariam, and uh, Sister Almela. Huh? We should give them full support hmm? because they are the one who started with this initiative. Huh? We should support them 100% huh? because it's having huge impact in the, in the war stage. Mm -hmm. huh? You remember when there was a fight here in Ethiopia? Hmm? It helped diffuse the, the tension here in Ethiopia. Sure. So we should support them 100% so that we can able to move forward. Mm -hmm. It's good, good movement. This movement is a very strong movement. We have to support. It is everyone's movement. You see, the normal movement should be you know, institutionalized and then become strong and then can fight for every human nature and mother earth. Okay. So that, that should be done as I feel. So those guys who took the initiation in US, they need respect. So we have to be with them. And there's my friend in here, my brother from Burundi, is also fighting with that. I'm also with him. We are on it. So I hope we're going to see prevailing Africa in the future. Given the fact that a large number of countries globally have been affected by the external pressures, sanctions and interventions, the Pan-Africanists is believed that more countries and people can join the current no more movement. Now it's time for trending news. What are the latest in uh, the past 24 hours? Here with me is Habtama Shagre. It's uh, frequently happening here for uh, uh, briefing us about uh, updates of uh, selective news in the past 24 hours. Uh, recently, after a couple of weeks, uh, the Continent Organization, the headquarters of the African Union, is going to host, Addis Ababa is going to host the 35th AU Heads of State and Government Summit. And also there will be uh, many more events in Addis Ababa. And uh, what have you observed? Thank you very much, Danny. As you mentioned that um, Addis Ababa is selected as an host to African Union Head Summit. It's an interesting story because after the law enforcement oppression in the northern part of Ethiopia, there are a lot of rumors that Addis Ababa is not safe and peaceful to hold such kind of uh, meeting by some foreign countries and they are also using such kind of terms as a campaign to remove such kind of um, plans um, from Addis Ababa. Um, due to that is the diplomatic activities made by those embassies and those officers, uh, the government of Ethiopia is bringing back to the Ethiopian uh, diaspora and showing that Addis Ababa is more safe and peaceful uh, to make such kind of uh, meeting. And I know that Kepia is one of the founding fathers of African Union Commission next to or equal within Kenya and other Ghana and Pan Africanist. And uh, the headquarters is also found in Addis Ababa. And uh, that there are a lot of reasons why Ethiopia is selected to host such kind of meetings over the past many years. And there is no reason to lift such kind of uh, culture to other African countries because Ethiopia is a sign of independence for all African countries. And uh, Ethiopia is also a backbone of African independence. I remember uh, during the inauguration ceremony of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed last time, uh, there were uh, uh, heads of state and presidents from various African countries. We can mention Uru Kenyatta, president of Kenya. He said, Ethiopia is our mother. Yeah. It means a lot. Oh. It, it's directly related to the independence of uh, African countries. It has a spearheaded. Ethiopia is the only nation which was mm -hmm. not colonized and it has set exemplary deeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has become a stepping stone mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all African countries uh, to follow suit and to fight for their independence. And uh, fortunately, most of them have got their independence. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think he said, Ethiopia is our mother. Ethiopia mm -hmm. is the mother of Africa. Mm -hmm. We can mention also Ethiopia the origin, the cradle of mm -hmm. mankind. Mm -hmm. So in connection to that, many African countries have uh, uh, a lot to say about uh, Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. That's why the reason most of African countries are showing their unprecedented role in support to Ethiopia in this critical time 
because Ethiopia is the backbone of all African countries' independence and struggling and showing the way how to uh, remove themselves from colonization and other problems related within the foreign countries and invaders and white aggressors. And that's why they are showing their support and commitment. And the most important thing is to show that this is peaceful and to show that this is more safe to do business and other investment activities. And the, the movement of the diaspora is also showing this concern. And as you mentioned, Danny, there are a lot of uses why this African Union Head of State Summit is uh, kicked off here in Ethiopia because there are a lot of problems that are also witnessed in African countries. The first one is economic problem, political problem, and social problem. So such kind of problems, the uh, African Union Head of State Summit is very much critical at this time because most of African countries are under a burden condition that comes from some white aggressors and foreigners those colonial mentality individuals are coming and put themselves into African countries. And Addis is hosting such kind of Pan-Africanism movement to show uh, why African countries are striving and standing together to say no more and other movements and campaigns. I do you know that Ethiopia is uh, a starting point of those independence and also they are a starting point of it's freedom. A pioneer. Yeah, a pioneer. That's why a lot of foreign countries are putting on the question mark that is uh, this is sedged by a lot of problems, but not that is the hard fact on the ground. That was political. Yeah. So the uh, uh, conference happens here in Addis Ababa after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It has lots of significance for the social, the economic and political spheres. Mm -hmm. Basically, there is a political problem and democratic problem. I think there are a lot of problems are happening in Africa. The first one is about unemployment, about economic integration, about politics, uh, about peaceful and um, uh, something which is important. Peace and security. Yeah, peace and security concern. There are a lot of West African countries are a shaking movement. Recently, this morning, Mali, a lot of people are taking the threat to uphold the France government of Mentality, of. yeah. So that is coming to the table at this critical time. I hope it's expected to the African Union head of summit is discussing on such matters. It's very, very vital to entertain pressing issues of the continent. Exactly, Dan. Thank you very much, Aftam. Thank you. This is the Disney News Hour. Sudan, now the country, has recorded the first days of a security officer during anti military protests. The officer was tapped to death on Thursday, according to the country's police spokesperson. Shagawi Mata has more from CGTN. According to Sudan's police spokesperson, the unnamed police officer was stabbed by a group of protesters. He was allegedly treating a colleague when the attack happened. Both officers had been working to secure the scene of the protest. The forces of freedom and change have been repeatedly calling for protest following the October 25th military takeover. The group is distancing themselves from the events of Thursday's protest, reiterating its non-violent stance. The enemies of the democratic transition are present in our regional and international surroundings and are not satisfied with any civilian-led transition in the country nor are they satisfied by the revolution that has adhered to the peacefulness since 2018 until this moment. The country is going through a period of political unrest. Experts fear the continued turmoil could lead to more violence. The worst scenario which you don't want is for the country to go into complete chaos with a constant state of tension. 
And the protests may develop into violent protests and happened in some countries. And this leads to the outbreak of a civilian war in Sudan. Demonstrators continue to call for the military to step away from the country's transition process. Let's catch up now. Uh, the weather updates, please.